In this series of videos, we're going to talk about accounts receivable. Um, I thought the most logical place to start was just to give a definition of accounts receivable. I was looking for it online, and I just did what any good internet user would do. I googled definition of accounts receivable, and this is what Google came up with, and it's a pretty good definition. It says money owed to a company by its debtors. Now, what does that mean? It means that we did some work for a customer, and the customer hasn't paid us right away. So they owe us money. If I'm owed money by a customer and it's, you know, typical short term transaction, I do work for them, I send them a bill, they don't pay me right away, they're going to pay me in a week or two, that represents an account receivable to me and it represents an account payable to them. They owe me money, I am owed money. So we're looking at this from the perspective of being owed some money. Um, and so I just want to you to think about accounts receivable for a moment uh, from the perspective of a company and think like why would a company offer accounts receivable that's a real million dollar question it took me a long time probably longer than it should have to piece this together but it's always something that uh, I wondered about as a student and I wondered about when I was uh, you know early on as a professional I thought why offer accounts receivable and I thought of it from a very selfish lazy accountant perspective and I said well you know a cash customer is much better let's think of a customer that pays us in cash uh, so let's say we do consulting work for a customer and they pay us a thousand dollars for the work so uh, today's February 26th uh, and they, I do a thousand dollars worth of consulting work and they just pay me right away so I debit cash because I've been paid right away for a thousand bucks and I'm gonna credit uh, consulting revenue oops consult sorry about that consulting uh, rev uh, for a thousand bucks okay so basic transaction I was paid a thousand dollars to do consulting work and then I thought okay now let's compare that to accounts receivable customer a customer that I give credit to so in other words I do a bunch of consulting work rather than collecting cash right away I give them a bill and I give them a month to pay uh, and I'm gonna compare the normal cash customer to the dream credit customer. So on February 26th, a customer comes in. I do a bunch of consulting work. I do a thousand dollars worth of work, uh, but they don't pay me right away. So if they don't pay me right away, I'm going to debit accounts receivable. Remember, accounts receivable is a current asset. We're owed money. Our accounts receivable is going up as a result of this transaction. Debit AR by a thousand bucks, and I'm going to credit consulting rev for another thousand bucks okay fair enough uh, now let's say they're our dream customer and they pay us right away so uh, they don't even wait the month we give them a month to pay they pay us after a week so it's like March 2nd or I'm not sure if that's a week later maybe March 5th uh, and they pay us so of course we get cash of a thousand bucks and or, and we credit not consulting revenue we've already credited revenue we don't want to record a double revenue here we're gonna credit accounts receivable to say we no longer have this receivable again a credit to AR makes it go down so we said we had a thousand dollars in receivable we don't have it anymore because they've paid us okay so being the lazy accountant that I was I looked at this situation I compared the two and I said well you know the best receivables customer in the world takes me two times the journal entries and two times the work uh, compared to a cash customer they only take one times you know one journal entry they take half the work and so I thought like why do why is every company I'm working on and doing audits for or working with why does every company I'm visiting offer credit why do they let their customers have accounts receivable it seems like a lot more work for the accountants and not only was it a lot more work for the accountants double the work in terms of journal entries it was actually honestly way more work because not every customer is a dream customer what about the customer that takes their month and it's March 26th and they still haven't paid well that means it's a phone call from you to remind them that their bills coming due or overdue uh, then if they don't pay a month after that it's you know off to a collection agency or it's more hassle and it's way 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 more work uh, to do receivables it's way more work to offer your customers credit and so I thought why why bother 
why not just take the cash right away and you know be done with it and the answer I'm here to tell you is very simple the reason co uh, companies offer credit to their customers is because if they don't their competitors will I often imagine uh, my, my university is a huge buyer of office supplies and I think they buy from like Pitney Bowes or some some company like that but I, I like to pretend this scenario happens uh, let's pretend that there's two big office supplies companies in town here Staples and Office Depot and those are the two big office supplies companies Staples and Office Depot and so let's say TRU my, my university uh, goes to Staples and they say hi Mr. Staples we'd like to buy some office supplies and Staples says absolutely buy office supplies and by the way we'll only accept cash uh, TRU a big big institution would say no 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 we'd like you to send us a bill and by the way if you don't if you don't give us credit the competitor down the street will and we'll go to them uh, and so it's something that companies kind of get their hands forced by customers desiring this they they want to have credit it's it's beneficial to the customer to to get the bill and pay a month later uh and and so it's it's the way business gets done so most companies that i worked with uh do offer credit in one form or another and so that's why even though it's a heck of a lot more work that's the reason that receivables exist and are just commonplace in business now further complicating this for accountants and part of the the more to my point of of why I didn't like dealing with them is not the fact that they take double the work and not the fact that uh you know it takes two journal entries rather than one uh, the reason I didn't like dealing with it as a young accountant is because it's a real pain in the neck when customers don't pay dealing with the fact that customers don't pay is a huge hassle and I'm going to show you why it's a huge hassle and that's going to be the focus of your weekend in your class if you're doing accounts receivable this is the real fundamental issue with accounts receivable and I'm going to explain by way of example so I'm zooming back in a bit um, okay so uh, let's again say we're offering credit. I must have zoomed in way too far. I can see that's a little bit big. Let me zoom out there. That's going to be better. Uh, so again, I'm offering credit. This time I make the sale on, uh, let's say December 15th. I make a sale and it's on account. So I debit accounts receivable. Uh, for a thousand bucks, exact same transaction as for before. I do some consulting work and I credit consulting revenue for a thousand bucks. I'm not sure why my pen kind of chose to erase itself there. Try that one. Um, okay, so debit accounts receivable, credit consulting revenue. Now let's pretend that my fiscal year end. I thought that would work. It uh, seems to have made it worse. I'm going to try. Mm. Well, we'll keep going. Uh, my fiscal year end is December 31st, and it's time for me to make financial statements. And so I issue my financial statements, and the customer hasn't paid right away, but who cares? They don't owe me for another month, uh, you know, so I, I give them credit. I say, you pay me in a month, and we'll all be good. Uh, and so December 31st, I do my income statement, my balance sheet, my statement of retained earnings, my cash flow statement. That's something you probably haven't learned yet. Um, my, my tax return. I do everything uh, uh, featured around that December 31st date. Uh, and so January the 15th rolls around. And I call the guy that owes me the thousand dollars and I say, Hey, you owe me a thousand dollars and it's due today. And the guy says, You know, I'm going to need just a few more weeks. I'm sorry. I, I can't afford it. Just give me a couple more weeks. And I'm a big softy and a big wimp. And I say, Okay, take a couple more weeks. So I give him till the end of January. It's January 31st. I call him again and I say, And I get another sob story. He says, Just a few more days. It won't take me that long. Uh, please just you know I, I just need more time so now uh, it's Valentine's Day it's February 14th the most romantic day of the year a very sad day for people like me uh, and I call him and I say hey buddy look 
well, I've given you an extra month here. Uh, why don't you just pay up? You need to pay up now. And I, I, well, that's what I'm thinking. And as I call, I get the number you have reached is not in service and I can't find the guy. Um, and I try to track him down and he's nowhere to be found. And I think, I begin to think on this day, huh, maybe this guy's not going to pay. And this is the big pain of, of giving credit is that not every customer pays up. Some go bankrupt, some disappear. There will be a time if you offer enough people credit, somebody is not going to pay you. That's just a reality of offering credit. And that creates this expense. And the expense is called the bad debt expense. And I've also seen it called the uncollectible accounts expense. I've seen it called a number of different things, but for our purposes in my video, we're going to call it the bad debt expense. Uh, and that's just for, like it sounds, when debt goes bad. When somebody owes us money, their debt goes bad. It's, it's rotten. I'm never going to get the money. So you might think, okay, well, it's February 14th, time for a journal entry because this guy's never going to pay us and the bad debt expense comes into play. Now, this is the wrong entry. I'm just telling you right now what I'm going to do here is, is the wrong answer. Um, but you might be tempted to go, okay, debit, bad debt expense. It's a thousand dollars that we're giving up on uh, and we'll credit accounts receivable because look this guy I, I mean he legally owes us money but we don't think we're gonna get it we certainly don't have a thousand dollar asset uh, current asset that we're gonna get paid from him so get rid of his account receivable credit accounts receivable for a thousand bucks um, and you might think that that's a logical entry and in fact it kinda is a logical entry but this entry is wrong uh, this is called the direct write-off method and this goes against GAAP, it goes against IFRS, it goes against the rules of accounting, and it goes against the specific rule of accounting called the matching principle. And the matching principle says we need to match expenses with the same period uh, as the revenues that they're earned. So let's, let me put a year on this. This is December 15th. Oh, my pen is just making me crazy today. This is December 15th, 2012. This is December 31st, 2012. And this is January uh, 2013. Why is it every time I make a one, it disappears? And so this is February 14th, 2013. And so what the matching principle says is, we need to match the periods of when we earn revenues and the related expenses. So if I record a bad debt expense in my fiscal 2013, and it's fiscal years that matter, not calendar years, it just so happened our fiscal year ended on December 31st. Uh, but I've re I'm recording an expense in 2013 that relates to 2012 revenue. I am violating my matching principle. So what does that mean? It means I need to record the bad debt expense related to this revenue. I need to record it on or before December 31st, 2012. I need my bad debt expense to be recorded here. Uh, now, I hope you're beginning to see the problem. This guy, we, we did some work for him on December 15th. Uh, we did a thousand dollars worth of consulting work for him and on December 31st we were owed a thousand dollars and we said yes this guy owes us a thousand dollars it was a legitimate account receivable uh, it was correctly recorded as accounts receivable in the financial statements and I had no idea this debt was going bad on December 31st I would never call the person and say hey are you thinking about not paying no 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 I thought it was good debt I thought I was legitimately owed a thousand dollars um, in fact, January 15th rolled around. I still thought I was going to get the money. January 31st, I still thought. I didn't know until February 14th that the debt had gone bad. But I need to record my bad debt expense on December 31st. Now, how do I do that? The answer is what we're going to talk about in our next couple of videos. But the answer is I estimate. So I take a guess on December 31st and we're not going to actually learn how to guess we're going to learn how to deal with it uh, with this situation so on December 31st I need to say okay look I have lots of people that owe me money clearly I think they're all good but 
clearly if I have a lot of people that owe me money, somebody's not going to pay. I need to estimate my bad debt expense. So this chapter in any textbook is all about how companies estimate their bad debt expense. And we're going to learn two ways of estimating the bad debt expense. In the next video, we're going to talk about the income statement method, also called the percentage of sales method. In the following video, we're going to learn the uh, aging of receivables method, also called the balance sheet method. So those are the two ways we estimate our bad debt expense because we can't wait for the debt to go bad. I can't wait for you know February 14th for me to realize this guy's not going to pay. I have to make an estimate on December 31st of my bad debt expense. That's the focus of the next couple of videos. I hope they are useful to you.